For the second stint of our summer break, we were headed to Lithuania. Naomi and I had just about 24 hours at home after returning from Madeira to pack and get ready for our 10 days in Eastern Europe. If you haven't seen our Madeira vlog yet, be sure to check it out after this, link in the description below. On our flight to Vilnius, we were fortunate enough to meet Lucia, a Lithuanian artist studying in London. She was kind enough to give us some great recommendations for our trip, and we didn't know it yet, but we fell in love with her music and it became the soundtrack to our trip. So we arrived in Vilnius late in the evening. It was super easy to get from the airport to the city. Built in the 1960s. Just one bus and it cost a couple of euros each. We were staying at the iconic Hotel Naringa, located in the centre of Vilnius on Gedi Minas Avenue. By the time we arrived, we were hungry from all the travelling, so we headed out for one of Vilnius's famous late night kebabs. After this, we went for a cocktail at Opera Social House Rooftop Bar. This was a great spot, with free entry, a chilled local vibe, and good views of central Vilnius. We knew we had a big day ahead of us, so just enjoyed one mojito overlooking the city before heading to bed. We started our first full day in Vilnius with a walking tour. This tour was arranged by the local council to encourage tourism and was completely free. We looked upon Gediminas Castle Tower and Vilnius Cathedral as we heard about the Grand Dukes that ruled the city in the past and the challenges that they had in the Middle Ages. It was an insightful start to the tour and gave us great context as to how powerful the country was in the past. We headed over to the Presidential Palace, situated next to the historic University campus. The tour guide provided us with all sorts of insightful nuggets as we went along, such as the fact that the Presidential Palace building was accidentally built too big and it stuck out into the road. Next, we wandered through the Old Town and Jewish quarters. These narrow streets were full of history, vibrant little cafes and restaurants, and definitely worth exploring if you find yourself in Vilnius. These streets led us to Uzapis, which is the artistic hub of Vilnius, and it is a self-declared republic with its own manifesto. There is a great vibe in Uzapis and some interesting things to see, with art all over the place. Our tour finished up at the Gothic masterpiece that is St Anne's Church. Whilst not much is known about the history of this church, it's really impressive to look at. We took this opportunity to ask the local guide for some lunch recommendations because we wanted to try some authentic Lithuanian food. We visited Etno Dravas, where we sat outside in the sunshine and we tasted the classic cold beetroot soup and potato dumplings washed down with a selection of local craft beers. The beetroot soup is a national favourite and it is genuinely very tasty. The perfect refreshing lunch on a warm summer's day. A must try on your visit. After lunch, we hopped in an Uber to a place called Green Lakes Public Beach. It's only around 20 minutes drive from the city, but you have this wonderful beach with great waters for swimming and relaxing. We had fun jumping in the water and reading our books in the sun. Was 
Later that evening, we headed to Gray's for dinner, which was divine. We shared the classic grey coconut soup with mussels and shrimp to start. We followed this with blueberry glazed barbecue ribs and duck breast, all washed down with some mango sangria. Naomi enjoyed the ribs so much that she said that they were worth getting on a plane for. Grey is a must visit for a nice evening meal in Vilnius. If our first 24 hours in Vilnius had ended there, we would have been more than happy. However, we had one more thing in store, which was recommended to us by Lucia on the plane. Born from one of the most notorious facilities in the center of Vilnius, Lukiski Prison 2.0 is the new cultural and artistic hub of Lithuania. The prison closed in 2019 and is famous as the shooting location for Netflix's Stranger Things season 4. A partner of the music agency which is implementing the Lukiski project believes that culture has the power to reinforce and transform Vilnius. And it has been said that artists are great accelerators when it comes to converting spaces into something unprecedented. This repurposing of a place with such a horrid past embodies the ambitious and forward-thinking nature of modern-day Vilnius that we had heard so much about from our walking tour and the locals that we had met. After a jam-packed day, we were exhausted and we headed back to our hotel where we discovered that they had a pillow <laughs> menu. Why are you so happy? I got a pillow. And where did you order it from? From the pillow menu. This is how you know you're in a nice hotel. They have a pillow menu. Crazy. For your sleeping pleasure, your room is furnished with comfortable hypoallergenic pillows. If you prefer additional or different pillows, please refer to the pillow menu. <laughs> <laughs> there are many options, including buckwheat, husk, down pillow, wool pillow, flat orthopedic, visco elastic pillow. But I got a soft one. Our second day in Vilnius was to be much more relaxed. We began the day with vegan breakfast at the Urban Garden. We explored the city a bit more at our own pace, revisiting some of the places from the walking tour that we wanted to spend more time at, as well as seeing some new places. We ended our afternoon with a massage at Asia Spa. And then we checked into our Airbnb near the Old Town where we would spend the next couple of nights in Vilnius before we moved to the tree house in the Lithuanian countryside. We began our third day at a quaint coffee shop called Coffee Circus Piano on our way to the train station. We had planned a day trip to Trakai, which is a short train ride from Vilnius around 30 minutes and costing two euros. Trakai is a popular tourist destination famous for its beautiful Trakai Island castle, dating back to the 14th century. The architecture can be best appreciated by hiring a pedalo and lazily boating around the island in the sun. And of course, we took the opportunity to have a swim. If you have the time, it's definitely worth a visit. In all honesty, Vilnius was not the destination. It was the stopgap, a place to pass through en route to the magical tree house. It was Lutzi who infused me with excitement for Vilnius, a place that was just meant to be a stopgap, but somehow truly stole my heart. A city, but not like any I've ever seen. It's almost an aspirational city, what other cities should aim for. Easy transport, minutes away from green spaces, green air, peace in a city. Something I never thought was possible. I truly believe love attracts love. 
and the love and pride that the Lithuanians have for their home permeates in the way they speak to each other, in the way they share their lives, their knowledge and how they welcome you. In a matter of days, I truly felt I knew Vilnius. I felt accepted and I truly loved the place. Whilst this might not be your first destination choice, it really should be. For our last dinner in Vilnius, before heading to Verena Treehouse, we visited a Georgian restaurant called Kashapuri. Having never tried Georgian food before, we weren't sure what to expect, so we tried a bit of everything. I'm not even going to taste that because I know it's going to be tough. I was looking at it thinking we should have got the bigger one. <laughs> Jack, this would have been enough for both of us. We had chinkali, which are a sort of dumpling. We had the lamb royal kashapuri, which is a cheesy curdy bread based dish, as well as a mutton chinaki, which is sort of like a stew or soup. Wow. Is it good? Before heading to the train station to travel to Verena, we decided to go back to Hotel Naringa because we'd heard so much from locals about its reputation for food, but we'd never had a chance to try it when we stayed there. We had a light lunch before heading up to the rooftop for cocktails. In our opinion, you're paying for the service more than the quality of the food and drink here. We then gathered our bags and headed to the train station to get on our one and a half hour long train to Verena. Again, nice and cheap, only costing around five euros per ticket. That wraps up the first part of our trip to Lithuania. If you'd like to see how we got on in the second half of our trip in the beautiful Verena treehouse, make sure you are subscribed to get notified when we post that video. But for now, thanks for watching. If you've been to Lithuania, make sure you leave a comment down below. We would love to hear what you thought of it and some great places that maybe we didn't cover in this video. We really liked it and would definitely love to go back and try some new places. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it as it really helps us out. Thanks for watching.